Have you found him yet? My feather bow. Not yet, Gunther. Three scars, but no more. But I mean, it's, it's five years since I lost it. Oh, take one of these. Nobody's claimed them. Oh, how about this one? With my pink rose and my blue veil. <laughs> You're not serious. Let me see that striped one. A boa like that doesn't just vanish, you know. A feather boa, nine feet long. Thank you. How do I know? Certainly, up, Countess. Yes, it must have been lost for you. <laughs> Here. Here's something to sop it up with. Oh, I don't want that. I want the manager. You! Oh, what is it now? What is it? It's you. It's that feather, that juggler, that screeching singer. This female lunatic! Oh, Mr. Chairman, I, I really do think that the public relations wise... Yes, yes, I think we should just accept the situation. I accept nothing, General. Once you accept, you're doomed. Tribune. And here's another one. I don't buy news. I make it. Well, lie. Oh, Look at them. Ah, <laughs> my friend. They come here, here in Chaillot, the very citadel of management. And they have the audacity to beard us with a raffish individualism. With the right of the voiceless to sing, the dumb to make speeches, the unemployed to juggle. But uh, why concern yourself? What do they matter? Commissar, I should tell you, whenever the poor are happy and servants are proud, whenever the mad are respected, then power is at an end. It is anarchy. The only hope for order is the standard citizen computerized. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that mad woman. The waiters install her with a flourish, even though she doesn't order anything. Do I get that sort of service? What would happen if I, a president of 12 corporations and a millionaire 10 times over, was to stick an iris in my buttonhole and start yelling, Are my bones ready, Erna? You see? Have I proved my point? I think we should make ourselves scarce. Rene, now report all developments and tell the prospector that if necessary, I'll prove I've never seen him before. And his scandal would be tragic at this point. To the best of my knowledge, which admittedly isn't up to date, <laughs> the latest method is to apply mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Mm -hmm. Have you any medical qualification, sir? Possibly not, but I am a doctor. Ah. So what would you suggest, sir? It depends entirely on what's wrong with you. As a matter of fact... Don't let go my hand. When you let someone go, you never see them again. I let Alphonse Berto go, and I never saw him again, as the sergeant here will testify. He's better looking, wouldn't you say, than Alphonse Berto? I will know, madame. What are you doing? Well, I want the young man's name, given name, and date of birth. You think that's going to stop him from jumping in the river to tell him the date of his birth? Well, I'm not going to tell him. He's going to tell me. I wouldn't tell you mine. Don't be silly, Sergeant. Put that book away and console him. Console him? When people want to die. It's your duty to speak out in praise of life, not mine. I assume you have some motive for interfering with his attempt to kill himself. 
If you believe that life has some value, tell him what it is. Convince the young man that life is worth living. It isn't. Silence! Now, what was the idea of jumping off that bridge? The idea was to land in the river. He doesn't seem to be at all confused about that. If you keep interrupting all the time... I'll be quiet. Thank you, madam. Countess. Well, first of all, you must realize that uh, suicide is a crime against the state. Why? Why? Well, because, uh, because every time anybody commits suicide, it's a soldier less for the army and a taxpayer less for the... Sergeant, what are you? A lover of life or a tax collector? <laughs> I defy anyone to stop dying on your account. Ah, uh, well, perhaps you can do better. Certainly. This is not a difficult case at all. In the first place, why should he still want to die when he's just fallen in love with someone who's just fallen in love with him? What? What are you saying? Dudley, I know why you were in such a hurry to drown yourself. Well, you don't at all. That prospector wanted you to commit a horrible crime. How did you know that? He stole my boa and now he wants you to kill me. Not exactly. Well, they can't kill me because I have no desire to die. Fortunate. To be alive is to be fortunate, Roderick. To be alive is to be fortunate. But all you need, in order to feel the call of life again, is a letter in the morning mail giving you your schedule for the day. You write it yourself the day before. For instance, here are my assignments for this morning. To mend my petticoat with bed thread, to curl my ostrich feathers, to write my grandmother, to save at least one young man, etc., etc., etc. That's life. How does it seem to you now? Oh, it seems marvellous. And that's only the morning. Wait until I tell you about the afternoon. Madam, that will you th oblige me by letting go of that boy's hand? Certainly not. I'm holding his hand because I shall need his arm in a few moments to take me home. I'm very easily frightened. Right, officer, arrest this woman. What for? What for? Well, it's against the law for a woman to detain a man on the street. Uh, uh, Countess. Strictly between ourselves, what are you holding him for? Well, I'm holding him because Irma wants me to hold him. If I let him go, it'll break her heart. Right, I shall take your number. Take his number. It's 3132. It adds up to nine. It'll bring you luck. What's he saying, Irma? Oh, he says the young man's life is in danger if he goes. I'm warning you all for the last time. Ah, oh, now, I saw that. That was a deliberate assault on a person unknown. I witnessed it. I'm afraid, sir, I shall have to remove you for your own safety. This boy is my nephew. Abuse will get you nowhere, sir. I have a number. Yes, the accused continued to use foul language and had to be forcibly restrained. I, I, I happen to be a lawyer. What did you do? Murder someone? Well, I meant to. I was going to blow up a room full of warmongers. Oh, no. No, he's wrong. His uncle lied to him. It, it was just a trick. If the bomb had gone off, it... Oh, it would have killed the city planner. What an extraordinary thing. Is this possible? Yes. Very possible. I'm beginning to understand now. He was using me to further his own plans. He wants to destroy the whole city. Not with bombs, but with his machines. They're all ready to move in. In three months, if he has his way, Paris will be covered by a forest of derricks and drills. What are they looking for? Have they lost something? For oil, Countess. They're convinced that Paris is sitting on a lake of oil. I well, suppose it is. What harm does it do? Is this reason to destroy a city? For them, yes, Countess. Well, what would they do with this oil? It gives them the power to destroy other cities, Countess. Mm. What a wretched world they live in. So unlike ours. I think we should forget about them. Countess, if only you knew. If only I knew what? Shall we tell her? What? What are you hiding from me? Nothing, Countess. Nothing, Countess. It's you who are hiding. You see, the world has changed. 
The garbage has changed. Nonsense. How could it change? The people are the same, I hope. People are not the same, Connors. People are different. No one is involved with anyone anymore. There, there's been an invasion, an infiltration. The world isn't beautiful any longer. The world is not happy. Is this true? The world is not beautiful. The world is not happy. Why wasn't I told? Because you've been dreaming a long time, Countess. And nobody wanted to disturb you. Countess, look, th there was a time, remember, when you could walk along the streets of Paris and everybody you met were, were just like yourself. I mean, oh, a little cleaner maybe, or dirtier perhaps, or angry, or smiling. But you knew them. You knew them. I knew them too. And one day, 20 years ago, I saw a face in the crowd. Face without a face. The eyes empty, the, the expression not human. It, it wasn't a human face at all. It saw me staring, and when it looked back at me with its gelatin eyes, I shuddered. Because I knew that in order to make room for one of them, one of us must have left the earth. The world is full of faceless people, Countess. And once you stop dreaming, as we all have stopped dreaming, you see them quite clearly. They were here today. Their clothes don't drink. When they order you about, they don't look at you. And they lie on you. They don't perspire. When they applaud you, they make no sound. When you're dumb, they blame you for not talking. But who are these people? What do they do? They do nothing, Countess. They feel nothing, they give nothing, they make nothing. All they do is pimp. Countess, the poets, the peddlers, the jugglers, the innocent, the mad are all disappearing. The world is being taken over by the pimps. I can remember when a, a, a cabbage could sell itself just by being a cabbage. Today that isn't enough. Now even a cabbage has its pimp. Nothing is free anymore to sell itself or give itself away. I tell you, Countess, we're finished. Is this true, Roderick? Yes. Did you know about it, Irma? I know they want to make us all the same, Countess. You can't even trust the air anymore. They poison it. My flowers don't last overnight. Food goes rotten before you serve it. Animals are born and die in darkness. Only death makes the headlines. They're a pack of fools. And so are you. How can you bear to live in a world where there is nothing but unhappiness? Are you all cowards? If these men are the cause of the trouble, all we have to do is to get rid of them. Some of us have tried. They're too strong. There are too many of them, Countess. The Death Mute knows them all. They employed him once. Because he was deaf. And then they fired him because he wasn't blind. They have all the power. And they're greedy for more. If they're greedy, they're lost. If they're greedy, they're stupid. If they're greedy, don't worry.